name. So, hello guys, and welcome to a brand new video from me, Pickles Parker Reviews. Now, a series I've been doing for a while is my movie reactions, selection of videos in which I give my first thoughts on a film I've recently seen at the theatre. I've enjoyed making these videos, however, I felt something was off with them. I decided to start scripting my reviews to make my videos feel more organised and professional and add more structure to my reviews. I'm also adding this format to some of my other audio review series, such as my Doc 2 classic review series. Anyway, on with the review. Ready Player One is a film based on the best selling novel by Ernest Cline and produced and directed by Steven Spielberg. It stars Ty Sheridan as Wade Watts, a young person living in the year of 2045, where life in the real world is dull and desolate. However, a more interesting world is right around the corner of the Oasis, a virtual reality utopia where people escape to be who they can't be in the real world. There are no limitations to who you can be, what you can do, but after the creator, James Halliday, played by Mark Rylance, passed away, the Oasis changes. Halliday left three keys, which, when gained, gives you not only Halliday's fortune, but also the ownership of the Oasis. How many Wade and his fellow Gunters have been searching for these keys for five years, but have always come up unsuccessful. He then meets this girl Artemis, played by Olivia Cook, and manages to find the first key. The company, IOI, headed by Ben Mendelssohn's Nolan Sorrento, approach Wade and ask for an alliance. When he refuses, his real-life family are destroyed, and he must team up with Artemis and his other Oasis buddies in the flesh to find the remaining keys and take Iowa Wade down. Now, Rare Player One was a movie marketing itself on its pop culture references and its world based upon pop culture. While there are quite a few references and Easter eggs, and most of them are for you to spot, Quite a few are spelled out to you and mentioned on screen, like when each says, look there's Akira's bike, or something like that. Pointing them out ruins the whole easter egg concept, and alienates viewers who may not get the reference. Despite having a story of its own to tell, it relies on references to market itself and draw people into the theatre, and will leave viewers disappointed with the way it's been handled. A lot of the references were really nice and inviting. References to things like Overwatch, Black, Back to the Future, and even The Shining. Just in my opinion, some weren't handled quite as well. Now, the film starts off rather slow, with Wade narrating over scenes telling us about the Oasis. I don't really have a problem with it, it sets the scene and describes this intriguing new world that you'll be spending the next two hours in. This story doesn't really get going until about 45 minutes in, which is a bit late, however I do think the slightly late start does benefit the viewer's understanding of the Oasis, with the first half an hour allowing us to explore this not so impossible future. Now while this story looks fantastic, the idea is intriguing and the reference is inviting, the characters in this film is what really lets it down. Whilst characters like James Halliday and Artemis have intriguing backstories, Ty Sheridan's Wade Watch and Ben Wade Watts and Ben Mendelsohn's Nolan Sorrento, despite the brilliant performances, are very generic characters with nothing to differentiate them from standard stereotypes. Overall, this film is a visual spectacle with another magnificent turn in from Spielberg. The ideas within it about virtual reality are fascinating, and the world created in the Oasis is really quite cool. Despite some references being handled wrongly, most of them are rather inviting. While some characters are generic and stereotypical, performances from the likes of Ty Sheridan, Mark Ryans and Ben Mendelsohn really bring this film up. Ray Player One is a film that I don't think will age too well in the future because of the very current references, but right here, right now, it's a very enjoyable script set in a future that doesn't seem too far away. I give it a 7.5 out of 10, and 3.5 and stars out of 5. Please like this video um, if you have enjoyed it, and if you want to see more content from my channel, then please hit subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye. So, The Seeds of Death, a good story, 
Petrarch on his untold form as the Doctor and the Ice Warriors are better than they've ever been and you know I love the Ice Warriors. The whole Dyer's team gets something to do and the idea of the rocket is a great one. One thing I will say is it, like a lot of early Doctor it suffers from too long syndrome and the story could have been easily narrowed down to four parts but overall it's a very good story and I love the Ice Warriors so bonus points. I give the Sea to Death a 7 out of 10.